I'm back. Let's do some Mandela. Here we go. Hey everybody, welcome back. Jeff Pilkington here at Launch TV. Here at Launch TV, we are the future, and the future is Launch TV. That's right, we have lots going on. It has been a two month hiatus, but let me tell you, it was an important one. We have the coronavirus going on. I hope everybody is doing well. I hope you're staying healthy. I hope that things have gone well throughout those two months for you, as it is not a very fun thing at all. With everything crazy going on, the last thing we needed was this virus, and it's been two months, and I have taken those two months and done my thing, stepped away from YouTube and it was a good little two months, but it's time to get back to YouTube because I just enjoy making videos for you all. And Kira and I also have the Launch Radio podcast, which we are working on. More of that is coming. Jeff and Kira live. We intend to do more episodes once here in LA, once the quarantine, you know, the, the shelter in place lifts a little bit and we can get together. We want to have more episodes of that. So that is coming. If you like these videos, be sure to like below, comment. I like interacting with you guys. You can do all that social media. All of that is below. Fun times as always. Anyway, I'm also starting to, on my Twitter, do live videos on Periscope, which you can check out. I have like launch news going on there. So we got launch news, launch TV, and launch radio, AKA Jeff and Kira Live. So we got three different branches now going and we're enjoying all three. Two months off, that was the hiatus. We need to make a Mandela Effect video. It's like time. I know, and this is a long intro, but it was a long intro because I'm coming back and we gotta do it and we gotta get to it. So with that being said, we have a bunch new Mandela Effects today. I cannot wait to share them. I wanted to give a shout out to my cousin, Luke Schomburg. Luke, you're a superstar, you rock. I told you I give you a shout out, Luke Schomburg. He is the best future superstar. With that being said, let's get going. Okay, first Mandela effect I have today. I gotta tell you, I was looking through Moneybag's site, Moneybag73. He has some great Mandela effects, so I'm gonna share a few of them here that are mixed in. Like some of them I also saw just because they're being talked about in the Mandela effect community, but there are a couple that were on his that I was just like, holy cow, okay? Like there are some big changes happening. Like this is pretty crazy. I can't even believe it. Like in the two months, some big ones have popped up. So the first one I wanted to share with you is dogs playing poker. Remember these pictures, paintings of like dogs sitting around playing poker? Like, do you remember what those things look like? Like literally the dogs playing poker. I like looking at it with you guys live. Okay, now this thing, like it was like these dogs and they were like sitting in the living room with a deck of cards. Basically there was like the red light and they were like hanging, you know, there's like the green table with the felt. But I remember him from college. My roommate, Joey White, he had a dogs playing cards painting. And I specifically remember them wearing hats. Now, now it wasn't just hats, it was like this green visor. Like, do you remember the green visor with the dogs and they were playing cards and like some of them were smoking? I don't see the smoking either. Like they had smoking, but they had green visor. It looked like a little, you know, the guy with the cigarette and the heart, you know, like the green visor, like lights or whatever. Like, you know what those things look like, but the dogs were wearing them. The damn dog, where did the green visor go? <laughs> <sighs> okay, first Mandela effect and I already can't handle it. So if you know where the green visor went, let me know because these dogs were wearing hats and now if you Google it, the green visor has disappeared from the dogs. It's all gone to the dogs. Can't handle it. Okay, anyway, let's move on to another one. Okay, do you, okay, let's do this one. Okay, oh my God. There is this movie line that's going around the internet that The Verge published an article and The Verge, famous website, let's give a round of applause, The Verge. All right, The Verge, anyway. They published an article about this movie line that people remember being from a movie, but they can't figure out what movie it was from. So there's a line from a movie and they can't figure out what movie it was from. Now that's a little bit strange. The line is, what does it do? That's the beauty of it. It doesn't do anything. What does it do? That's the beauty of it. It doesn't do anything. Now they pulled their Slack room, the Verge's culture Slack room, and they got a bunch of different answers that were in a bunch of different movies, including The Big Lebowski, Bruce Almighty, Office Space, The Hudsucker Proxy, some corporate movie where they sell stuff, the movie with Reggie Watts? Does this quote not exist? So they got a wide range of opinions there. And the verdict is nobody can decide what movie or where this quote came from. I can't, I can't either. Where does it, what does it do? That's the beauty of it. It doesn't do anything. What does it do? That's the beauty of it. It doesn't do anything. It sounds so familiar and I cannot place it. And the verge went through like a bunch of different possibilities as to where it could be from. You know, first of all, all those guesses were, were incorrect because it wasn't in any of those movies. It, you know, some people thought the hit Hitchhiker's Galaxy. Some people thought Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Some people thought The Simpsons. God, The Simpsons is everywhere. And it didn't match any of those. They even went back into older films and there were like pieces of them and they, they couldn't quite place it. And at the end, they decided that they just didn't know. They just didn't know. <laughs> so when we all remember these quotes, who can't? 
<laughs> How do people all remember these quotes and then they just don't know? But we all remember it, but we don't know. So if you know, comment below because I don't know, but it seems familiar to me. But if you know and you can fill us in, let me know and I'll respond and we can chat about it because that's really weird. I don't know what happened to that quote. It walked away. The Verge doesn't know either, but thank you to The Verge because I'm wondering and they're wondering and nobody seems to know. So that's that. Anyway, let's move on. Okay. These two I saw, they're being passed around in the Delphi community, but I saw them both on Moneybag 7. And it's two brands and one of them gets me especially because I just can't fathom what happened to it. But okay, LinkedIn. We all know LinkedIn, right? Everybody knows LinkedIn. You go on there, you know, it's for businesses and people are using it and everything that's happening with that. Well, people don't remember it being spelled out with an E. So if you look at the brand, it's currently LinkedIn with an E. LinkedIn. People don't remember that E being there. It wasn't spelled properly. It was linked like D. The E was missing. It was like linked. LinkedIn with no E. Just L-I-N-K-D. It was L-I-N-K. D and then I N. So LinkedIn, like together, the E was missing. Why is there an E? Why is linked spell properly now? There should not be an E in there. Like it was linked in for a reason. It was like abbreviated, remember? So where did the, where did the E go? Under the E, where did the E go? The E, there shouldn't be an E. Why did the E show up? The E probably came from another brand where it disappeared and it walked over and appeared on LinkedIn. I guess, I don't know why there's an E suddenly there. Like, I don't know. It brings me a lot of stress and I need to call Dr. Fauci because I can't handle E showing up on LinkedIn anymore. So call the doctor. That being said, let's move on. Now, the other brand I wanted to see, which this brand just amazed me because it wasn't spelled this way before, but there is this brand called Pinterest. Now, Pinterest wasn't spelled like interest. Pinterest was not interest. Pinterest was just Pinterest. Like it was pin, P-I-N-T-R-E-S-T. -E Pinterest, 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 okay? Now it's spelled like interest. So it's P-I-N-T-E-R-E-S-T. -E -E so the E's decided to join Pinterest and LinkedIn. And Pinterest and LinkedIn brands didn't really notice. They just kind of said, oh, you know, in this reality, we've got ease, you know, ease just joined LinkedIn and Pinterest. They just showed up at the door and joined the brand. And so now their name has changed and nobody seemed to care, except me and money bags and maybe, you know, the Mandela effect people. How should I know? Why did the E show up? There was no E in Pinterest. It was just Pinterest. Pint rest. Pinterest and LinkedIn had an abbreviation. E showed up in interest and an E showed up in LinkedIn. And that's, just bizarre. It's just, I don't know where these E's are showing up. I don't know why. I don't know why. When people ask, I don't know why. I wish I knew, but I don't know. And that's that. Okay, next topic. Okay, let's move on. So, Big Ben. Now, the Big Ben Bell Tower, which is in Westminster, the Palace of Westminster in London. It's in the Elizabeth Tower. There's this Big Ben clock, okay? And the clock is famous for its Roman numeral around on Big Ben. Now, people remember these numerals being easy to see and pronounce. They were in black writing and they were big numerals and they were pronounced and easy to see, okay? Now when you look at the clock, you can't really even see them. They're like small and faded and you can't make it out and people don't remember Big Ben clock being that way in Westminster. Why are the Roman numerals unclear all of a sudden? They don't get it. So if you know what happened to Big Ben's numerals, let me know because they do look a little strange, I will admit. I always tell you which ones affect me because I'm trying to figure it out just like you are. So if you can help me figure it out, let me know because I'm in the boat trying to figure out these things with you because I don't know either. I'm not like the magic focus poker Focus. I'm the one trying to figure it out and making videos. So maybe Dr. Fauci, you know, maybe he did it or, you know, maybe, uh, you know, I don't know, man. I mean, I just don't, I just don't know. I just don't know. I just don't know. Okay, next one. Okay, now this one's being talked about everywhere. I mean, I can't even deal with it. Okay, so carrots. Okay, let's do carrots. Let's talk about carrots real quick. Now, everybody remembers that carrots actually helped eyesight. People remember carrots. You take, you eat carrots, it's good for your eyesight. Turns out that's that was never true. In the current reality, carrots had to do with, with World War II. Like literally when the Air Force, it says, during World War II, the British were the first to deploy radar, which suddenly made their ground artillery and air force a heck of a lot more accurate when detecting enemy planes. They needed to keep the reason or the enemy would figure out where the radar stations were and attack them. So knowing they couldn't hide this sudden increase in accuracy, they put the story out that the pilots were all eating lots of carrots to improve their eyesight. So carrots happened because of a lie that happened in World War II as to you know how their, the radar tracking system was happening. How can we see the planes? Oh, we're eating uh, carrots. We're eating carrots. It's good for your eyesight, you know? We're eating carrots. That's why, that's why. So they had 
their own medical debates back then. Today we got hydroxychloroquine and we got remdesivir. And back then they had carrots or no carrots. But apparently, the current history shows that carrots don't do anything for eyesight. But we still, some people think that they did because of what happened in World War II? Because of the radar? Because people were saying that carrots improved the pilot's eyesight? How do you guys see the enemy planes? I don't get it. Oh, because I eat carrots. Because they eat carrots. We eat carrots and it helps. It's just carrots are good vitamins for eyesight. So everybody went on believing that? Is that what happened? Because that's how history has it. Now history is that carrots were a lie that happened during World War II. And that they don't really improve eyesight. It was just a lie. I like learned in school that carrots help eyesight. Either we're a bunch of morons or reality's changing. So you pick. We can go with A, morons, or B, reality's changing. Sometimes I wonder, because <laughs> us humans, woo! I mean, anyway, gotta move on from that one. Okay, so let me know what you know about carrots, because I remember learning that they helped eyesight, but now that didn't happen. Just a World War II lie. Woo! Don't know. Okay. All right, let's see what else we got here. Okay, university. There's a famous university that we all know quite well. It's in Baltimore, Maryland, founded in 1876, and the name of this university is John Hopkins. University. We all know John Hopkins University. Problem is, when you look at John Hopkins University, it's now Johns Hopkins University. That's right. Go ahead and Google John Hopkins University. Oh wait, Google John Hopkins University. The universe has decided to make it Johns Hopkins University. So if you want to go to Johns Hopkins, Johns Hopkins University, go ahead and give them a call. Meanwhile, out here in LA, you know, just east of here, we got a famous town where people go to and it's called San Bernardino. Well, I know San Bernardino quite well. Well, San Bernardino has become San Bernardino. So instead of San Bernardino, we've got San Bernardino. San Bernardino. San Bernardino and Johns Hopkins University. So if you want to go to Johns Hopkins, you University, and if you want to go to San Bernardino instead of San Bernardino, an R appeared in San Bernardino, an S appeared in John Hopkins. What is going on? All these changes. All right, let's see. Okay, last one. This one we've all been watching. Okay, this just drives me. Tiger King. Everybody's watching Tiger King. You know, it's like the big hit show. You know, there, there's people been we've been talking about tigers everywhere. Like tiger has been like the theme. Didn't a tiger get coronavirus? Like literally the first animal to get coronavirus was a tiger. When we were talking about Tiger King, so a tiger got coronavirus. While we were talking about Tiger King, I swear we live in a simulation. I mean, this is just bizarre. Wait till you hear the Mandela effect. So on top of that, the Mandela effect world decided to give us a tiger Mandela effect. That's right. Everybody for a month's been talking about this Mandela effect within the community. And you know what it is? It's tiger. It's that a tiger, if you look at these pictures, now look at all these pictures. A tiger has white polka dots on its ears. That's right. No, I mean, how does that happen? Like, that can't happen. You, you, you can't, like, I can't, I can't even look at these photos. Like, a tiger, okay, just let, look. Now, how does that tiger, why, <laughs> why do those tigers have dots on their ears? I can't, I can't deal with that. I look down here and I see tigers with dots on ears. Do you remember these dots like this on the ears? Was it always standard for the tiger to have white polka dots? on the back of its ears because I don't remember those white polka dots I can't do and I just can't take it. <gasps> What's with the tiger in the spots? Please let me know. I can't handle it. Anyway, thank you all for tuning in. We did a group today. That was a starter group. We're going to have more videos coming soon. Here at Launch TV, we're the future and the future is Launch TV. I hope you enjoyed this more soon. Talk to you all later.